Hi, I'm Mark Himmelstein, the CTO for Risk 5 International, and welcome to Risk 5 Day Japan in 2023. We're so excited about being here. I'm going to talk a little bit about the road ahead and what's going on. Uh, and I just want to you know, give thanks to everybody who organized this and encourage you all to participate. Um, uh, Shumpei in particular, you know, he approached me. I was in, in Japan for uh, Cool Chips in April, gave a talk there and uh, met with, with him. And I'm very excited about the, the, uh, the community in Japan. And I hope that uh, this talk provides you some information that's useful for you and encourages you to, to uh, join RISC-5 if you aren't a member and to uh, participate if you are. So today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about uh, the overview and why people use RISC-5, a little bit about uh, uh, embedded and portability um, and uh, in, embedded in real-time extensions uh, and the software ecosystem. So we like to say that RISC-V is inevitable because we believe it. it it's amazing what's going on. Uh, we also uh, believe it enables the best processors. We're starting to see new processors come out that are competitive with the best processors on the market. And we're rapidly building the strongest ecosystem and you'll see all the kind of things that we're doing for that. So tens of billions of RISC-V cores have been deployed for profit already. In 2021, we uh, believe there were 10, you know, in excess of 10 billion cores. Um, we don't require reporting, so this is all anecdotal. Uh, but for example, we know that uh, there's an earbud manufacturer in China called Blue Trump that in 2021 was shipping uh, in excess of 600 uh, uh, million uh, uh, cores per year in their earbuds. Uh, last uh, December uh, at the summit uh, North America, uh, as, uh, Qualcomm uh, announced that they had been shipping 650 million cores with their Snapdragons. Uh, more to come. Uh, there's going to be more cores per, per, per chip. Uh, so there's just lots going on out there. And when we add it all up, it, you know, it's pretty clear to us uh, about where the numbers are. Um, one of the first questions I'll, I'll talk about is, are we an open source hardware or are we open standard? We kind of said open source hardware for a while, but we realized that that really wasn't true. We're more like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So, uh, you know, what is an ISA? An ISA is basically the contract between software and hardware. It's how, it's the protocol, it's how they communicate. Um, so, we, we don't do open source ourselves, but we work with a lot of open source upstream projects um, and we don't do any kind of reference implementation. We just do specifications, just like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Um, so we, the only thing that we do support is having uh, you know, a formal model and uh, some basic tests in order to validate uh, your implementation. Um, unlike open source software, you, you know, we really encourage people to go ahead and do custom extensions. There have been a number of custom extensions that have been done. There's more going on. Um, but even if you don't do custom extensions, you have to do a custom implementation. I mean, there are other uh, uh, open source groups like um, Open Hardware, Chips Alliance, um, Low Risk, uh, Berkeley ha ha have all had open source versions of chips and people can go ahead and start with them or use them directly. Uh, and we're glad for that, but we sort of stay uh, very neutral. We don't want to favor things. Uh, we enable things. We're very supportive of, of other open source hardware projects, uh, but we really are an open standard. Um, and we have no restrictions on how specification you use. The only restriction is if you want a brand then you have to go ahead and follow some rules. Uh, and we're going to talk about some of those in, in a little bit. So uh, very open, you know, very easy to use. And it goes into this next slide. Why risk five? Why is it so successful? Why are people jumping on the bandwagon? The number one reason is flexibility. As I said in the previous slide, you can do whatever you'd like with it. If you want to just use the base instructions and and you know, just use some custom SOC on the side, you can do that. Uh, if you wanna use the full boat of everything, you can do that. If you wanna change things, you can do that. 
we are very supportive. We think that this is about differentiation and innovation um, and, uh, and not about, uh, you know, all of us going our, our own ways. The reason we're a community, the reason, for example, the ecosystem is worked on together is because people want to share the burden. In this day and age, even large companies cannot go ahead and fully support an ISA and all the work that needs to go in to port and support software, uh, to, to support the hardware software boundary, things like IOMMUs, uh, by themselves. And so we share that burden. That's why we stay as a community. That's what keeps us together. Um, and we learned that very heavily from uh, from folks like Linux. Uh, you know, they built this uh, sort of mentality that it was it was their thing. And so this goes into a pride of ownership uh, perspective. Risk Five was built in the community. It's the open, or the only open source. Uh, um, I'm sorry. Open, I, even I said I'm sorry. It's the only open standard. Uh, you know, in history of this magnitude uh, that's been built totally uh, in the open. And and so, uh, you know, just like Linux, people feel it's their house. People feel RISC-V is their house because it was built together. Also, we've had an EDA renaissance over the last 15, 20 years. Uh, things like modularity and chiplets and so on and so forth uh, allow it uh, allow more opportunities to go ahead and plunk down a risk five core to do security or I/O uh, in a more complex uh, total solution. So next thing I really want to talk about is portability. Um, you know, we have a unified. You know, we're we're working on a unified common standard here uh, with a robust software ecosystem, but the economy is relying on portability. And, and so what does that mean? So for applications and runtime software, if we want vendors to go ahead and be able to make money, they need profiles and they need an API and, and an ABI uh, in order to, to go ahead and do that. Uh, profiles are a generation of instructions that work together. Uh, think of you know a family, a generation of, of uh, Xeon processors or a version of ARM processors. Similarly, we have a set of instructions, state and, and behavior that work together, uh, and they're called profiles. And we're going to go through that in a moment. Uh, that coupled with the API and the ABI give application vendors the ability to uh, have one release for an OS type and be and do one set of testing and uh, be assured that it's going to uh, run on multiple implementations. Similarly, for operating systems, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about platforms because the way you get an economy around operating systems is the same thing. You don't want to go ahead and have 15 zillion choices. You want a just a, a, uh, a few sets of choices. Uh, we're working on a supervisor execution environment that includes a bunch of things you'll see um, and define a platform. Uh, and it also obviously depends on profiles uh, that enable the OS vendors to do the same thing or the hypervisor vendors to do the same thing, which is, have one set of bits, do one set of testing, be assured that it's gonna work on multiple implementations. So profiles, um, profiles are based on bases. Um, there are things called bases and there are things called extensions. Bases are you know, things like RV32i and RV64i, there are more than that, uh, but it has the basic instruction, state and behavior, load, store, jump branches, add, subtract, logical. Um, there are a couple of profiles that, are, that just have bases in them. And that's those are the RVI profiles. And this enables people to brand with a profile that um, you know, is good for bare metal and people are just going ahead and doing their own thing as I talked before about, for example, the earbud manufacturer. Um, and it just has the base in it and, it's, and you're able to go ahead and use it. Um, then in uh, 2020, we went ahead and uh, did this thing called RVA20, sort of headed towards application, you know, very capable, um, um, you know, machines, uh, whether they be on your wrists or, or in a data center. Um, and we added a bunch of instructions. You can see the popular ones here. Uh, and then RVA22, uh, which was all the stuff that was ratified in 2021. And we added more stuff. Um, and uh, when we did the RVA20, there's going to be a public name for this. So people won't have to use the nerdy names, you know, RVA20, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
there'll be some kind of public name. And I think they're going after minerals. I, they haven't totally decided yet. So, you know, you can imagine something that that is like a, a cobalt release or something like that. And we'll talk about that and, and people being compliant or compatible with that as opposed to compatible with uh, the individual uh, profiles underneath. Uh, RVA 23 is being worked on right now. Um, and uh, RVA probably 24. Uh, we haven't started this yet, so I can't tell you what, what, what the nerd name is even, uh, but it will also have a public name and we'll start saying, look, hey, name two, let's call it uh, copper or something like that. It, it will go ahead and have all the things between this first um, uh, release we talked about, cobalt, you know, or name one and name two. So we'll talk about it having vector and vector crypto and a whole bunch of Android features, which we're going to talk about shortly. And in the future, we're going to add more profile types. Uh, there are some proposals out there for RVB, which is basically RVA with some less things, and RVM, which is really targeted towards more towards uh, microcontroller and bare metal kind of things. Um, we will have 128-bit registers, uh, longer instructions, uh, matrix ops. So there's a bunch of things that are being talked about right now. Uh, there, there, there are SIGs for a bunch of these special interest groups. Uh, if you're interested, please get involved and join those those groups. Um, so that those are profiles. Let's talk about platforms. What's a platform? Well, first thing a platform includes is a profile. Um, but then there's a bunch of OS kind of things that the OS depends upon um, that are needed in order to create a supervisor execution environment. So uh, Platform runtime services, those are things like SPIs and UEFI and ACPI. Boot and runtime services, this is actually how you come up and how you get everything set up to start with. Uh, security platform services, which pieces of the security model are, are um, going to be required in order to play in the platform. And then the minimum amount of hardware that's required in order to be part of the platform, things like you know, UARTs or PCIe or uh, other things. Uh, note here that the ABI is not part of this because we expect that multiple OS types, you know, Linux and, you know, eventually maybe, uh, you know, Android and, and Windows uh, can use the same platform spec uh, in order to um, uh, uh, brand and be compatible. Um, <clears throat> I, I now want to talk about, so so that was platforms. And, and, and again, um, just to note, uh, the, um, the the big work that occurred last year was really around profiles. I mean, that took two and a half years to do. We finally ratified it in March. Platforms is what we're hoping to do for 2024. And uh, through, I, I would say, say uh, four of the, um, the five parts are being worked on right now. We expect to pick up the last one here shortly uh, and uh, define the platform based on all those pieces. Um, but again, these are important for the for the economy, and you'll see what we feel about software here shortly. Um, but now I want to just uh, point out, because I saw when I was in Japan, I saw a lot of work on industrial controls, sensors, embedded IoT. Um, just to let you know, even though the first profiles are really targeted towards rich OS kind of things, we've worked on a lot of extensions that are really intended to help um, uh, embedded in real time. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of work that's gone on here. Um, I'm not going to go through them all. Uh, just one example, we just did the, the second set of compressed instructions it, because space is king down the bottom um, and they reduce the, the usage quite a bit. Uh, and there will be a third set uh, coming as well. Uh, but there's there are new profile families. I talked about some of those. Um, and there are uh, some new bases, uh, RV32E and RV64E, which both got uh, approved this year. Uh, also note that, um, uh, you know, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, there's uh, a whole bunch of, uh, you know, uh, uh, real-time OSs that are uh, depending on this. So what have we done this year? We ratified the, uh, 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 the following ISA specifications. Uh, we've uh, ratified, we have things called fast tracks that go through and you can see the things that are in there. Uh, we move the documentation, the unproved spec has gone to ASCII doc. And then there's new task groups and, and special interest groups that have shown up um, a, a lot in the non-ISA uh, area, and uh, it's very exciting. 
uh, what's coming soon, uh, you know, the other profiles that we talked about, platforms and the pieces that we've talked about, uh, a bunch of ISA extensions and fast tracks. Uh, you can see it's it's just a huge amount, uh, a bunch of non-ISA um, uh, specifications. Uh, and then uh, Priv is going to go uh, to uh, ASCII doc, uh, and we're working on um, the general experience for content and glossary and navigation. Um, I said I was going to talk about software. Software is our number one priority. Without software, um, the standard doesn't help us. Um, and we have a huge, huge list of all the things that have uh, been ported. This is a list of what works today. Um, you know, so this is not something in the future. You can get this stuff today. And we're working on trying to make it easier to go ahead and access this stuff and find it. Uh, we're working on a clearinghouse at RISC-V, uh, and you'll see some of the other things we're doing as well. Um, Android is is providing support. So we they announced that there were tier one support at the European summit. Um, they're working on, on coalescing their requirements and likely uh, we'll see those uh, show up in 2024, although much is underway already. And once we go ahead and, and you know, identify a, a profile for Android, that the lifetime of it can really literally be 10 years. So we wanna make sure we get enough there that Android can be successful. Um, I talked about real time. So th this is the list of boards uh, and cores that uh, um, RT thread, uh, you know, one of the real time operating systems supports. I did a talk for them and I was just shocked at how many are here. I get up every day and I'm shocked about the new um, uh, things for RISC-V, not just uh, the, the real time stuff, but everything. Uh, people are just doing an amazing amount of work, and uh, this just gives you an idea. Um, and then finally, there's a whole bunch of resources I want you to understand about. Um, first of all, there's a foundational software status uh, for, uh, and, and for each extension. So there's a, a sp spreadsheet of, of all the extensions and profiles, and then what works for them. So you're talking about, um, uh, you, you know, things like, uh, GCC, LLVM, uh, the, the sale formal model, uh, the architecture test, bin utils, and the two simulators, um, QMU and Spike. Uh, there's also a draft spreadsheet. We're starting to create this clearinghouse I talked about. We hired a director to go ahead and put this together of what software works on this five uh, and which extensions it supports. Um, there is a more of a marketing view, a risk five ecosystem landscape um, that uh, has a, a you know some a, a format that was developed by CNCF, and you can see it being populated in self service. Um, and risk five exchange, which goes ahead and is a free place for anybody doing risk five uh, related products, including services, so services. IP, chips, boards, systems, uh, et cetera, tools um, uh, to freely advertise on, on uh, this five exchange, whether they're a member or not. And then there's a new Linux uh, foundation project, which you may have heard of called Rise, and it's intended to accelerate open source software development on this five. Uh, and we've, uh, you know, we're engaged with them and we're working to coordinate with them. And, but we're very excited about the work that they're doing. So um, that's it for me. Uh, I, I want to tell you, change the world, come join RISC Five, help us do it. Uh, it's just an amazing, amazing ride. Um, and please enjoy the conference. Again, thanks to the organizers of the conference, the speakers, uh, the supporters uh, of the conference. Uh, but we're very happy about uh, Japan's involvement in RISC Five, and we look forward to more of it. Uh, thank you very much.